Hey guys, how are you today? All right, today we're going to work on this month's design team project with some of the products from my Etsy store, um, including probably some of the embellishments I've made with my um, new stencil line. This this is actually one of the stencils that's not quite out yet. Um, it will be available though for pre-order soon. Um, along with the feathers, that will be available for Peter soon. Um, currently available are the arrows and this uh, meditative face. So I've got a bunch of these that I did with the melted metallic paste, which at this point you've probably seen like ad nauseum on my channel. And there's probably gonna be a couple more videos on it because right now I'm just fascinated by it. But So I have a bunch of these embellishments. So we might use some of these. Um, we'll definitely use some of the stamps. Now, I have a kind of a fun DIY. So one of the things I want to do is play with making sort of a layered mixed media charm, but part of the layers I want to be shrink plastic. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if there's like a DIY for that rather than like buying shrink plastic, if you can even buy it anymore, there is. So um, you really should use number six plastic if you can figure out what that is. Um, you can use just product packaging. This is a lid from some cookies from the hardware store. I'm hardware store, the grocery store. And this is actually uh, plastic from a new um, cell phone mount thing that I got for my car that fits on the dashboard so that I can do hands-free navigating with my phone. Um, both of these work. I cut strips of them and toasted them in my toaster oven at about 325 um, for just, it just takes like a minute. Um, they both shrank about a half an inch, um, not a lot. This one, the cookie one, actually turned white, which is interesting. So I actually really find that fascinating. So we're gonna use that one. And I'm going to whack off part of this lid. I just want really the flat part. And I don't even want to, I mean, this is really, I'm taking stuff out of the trash can to do crafts with. You could take your time to take like the label off and salvage as much of it as possible. I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I am going to, there's that nice flat part here on the side, which is where I made the piece from that I toasted. And it started out, actually, if you can even see that, about that size and it turned into this size. So I'm not even sure if that's gonna show up on camera, but. Um, it shrank, not a lot in length, but it did shrink in width and turned white. So I'm going to just immediately throw all the trash in the garbage. Okay, then we're going to take, and we're going to take this, and we're, we're going to take some permanent ink. I actually think I'm going to break out the stays on, which I don't use a whole lot anymore. Um, and my stamp binder. Let's see. Let's pick a stamp. A stamp to shrink. Mm -hmm -hmm. What do we want to shrink? That would be the question. Do we want to shrink a new one? Do we want to shrink an old one? I should be doing this on camera. <laughs> so here we go. Here's my stamp binder. These are all of my rubber stamp collections. And this number here is the number of the collection. So this is number 10, seven. I kind of think I want to stamp this one, which is from stamp number, set, number seven. Of course it's at the bottom. So 11, nine, Eight, two, one of the first ones I did, one, three, six, five, and four. So I do think we're going to go, and are we? Maybe we're going to do a face. Let's do a face. I take back what I just said. <laughs> We're gonna do a face. So let's pull a face off of there. And we are gonna use the lid from the Stazon ink. It makes a great um, DIY stamp pad. 
And hopefully I won't have to re-ink this stamp pad. It's been a while since I used it. We'll find out. I'm going to ink up our stamp is super well. Um, this ink should work really well on this stamp pad. It does seem like it's need, needing re-inking, so hang on, it's jet black. So let's do that because it seems a little dry. We'll give that a second to soak in. Okay. You want to get it nice and black, and we're going to stamp it on the plastic here somewhere. You want to use a stamp that's not too small because. Uh, um, Especially if you know your plastic's going to shrink a lot, um, you do want to do a test little test piece. I don't recommend you do this in your house in your oven. Um, I recommend that you do it in a well vented ventilated area. I have a little toaster oven in my old studio space out in the garage, and I am going to do it out there. So there's our face. I'll zoom in on plastic. She's totally cute. So I'm going to um, cut her out carefully, hopefully, not smear the ink. Okay. And we are going to take that out into the garage and we are going to shrink her and hopefully turn, have it turn white and we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. You could of course color her in before you do this. I don't want to do that. I just want it black and white. So let's see what happens. All right, I'll be back. Okay, we're out in the garage. I've got my face in my little toaster oven and I'm going to, got it set to about, I don't know, just under 350, somewhere around 325 and then I'm going to turn it on. Yeah, I'll be back when it's done and she's all shrunk as much as she's gonna. Really quick, she turned white. She tried to get curly, but I uh, reached in there with some tools and uncurled it. Now I'm gonna pull it out while it's warm and smash it flat by putting it on the countertop um, with an old magazine on top of it and pushing down. So let's see if that works. Okay, she didn't get perfectly flat, but I'm okay with that. It worked like a charm. So let's take her back inside and compare her to the original size of the rubber stamp and see what the difference is. All right, I'll be back. Okay. There's the original rubber stamp next to the stamped image on plastic. It didn't shrink a lot, but it did shrink a little bit. There is a difference. It not only got thicker, but the plastic went from clear to white. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to set up the camera back on its mount above my table now, and we are going to get about to making some sort of an interesting charm thing with my rubber stamp. All right, I'll be back. Okay, so I have various bits and pieces and parts out here. Um, that I thought that I would do something with. I'm going to take her and set her aside back over by the binder. Um, she is really cute. I love this. I may trim her a little bit more, but let's set her aside for the moment and see. This is a scrap piece of mat board um, that I just happen to have lying around. And I said I wanted to do something with some of these, so I think I do. The question is, do I want to do it on the black side or the white side? I might want to do it on the black side um, because we already have this face. I don't want to use that face. I don't want the two images to be fighting with each other. I kind of want to use the arrows. I think I want to use the turquoise arrows. So we're going to do that and we're going to tear some of them off here. I'm going to use these. And really what we're going to do is we're going to just collage this whole sheet onto it. And whatever I don't use, I'll save and I'll use it for something else. So that I'm not worried about. Uh, we need a brush though. Alright. So I'm going to down some matte medium and obviously I didn't clean this brush very well last time I 
used it because it's a little bit on the stiff side. And then I'm going to take an old gift card or a frosting spreader or, you know what, even you could use a palette knife and I'm just going to push the deli paper and these melted metal uh, paste embellishments down into the glue. Now, because I'm using matte medium and it, when it sits on top of the melted metal, it's going to make it look dull and I don't want that. I'm going to take a baby wipe or two. <laughs> I grabbed two, the other one didn't want to come off. And I'm going to just scrunch it up in a ball. And I'm going to just run it over the melted metal parts of the paper and wipe some of that matte medium off. Yeah. Now we're going to let that dry. While it's drying, we'll work on other parts. Okay, so we're going to set that somewhere over here. I have a tag. I have an old pocket watch case without the back or the front, which I think I want to use. I've got my box of weird, odd bits and trims, fabric bits and trims. So let's see what we can come up with. First I want to put some color on this tag. I do kind of like the idea of dangling her from the tag. Maybe this in front of her. Something like something like that. Maybe even cutting her so she fits inside of here. That actually is interesting. What if I did that? What if I trimmed her so she fits inside of there? You know, I think we have to do that. <laughs> now that I said it, I think we have to do that. So we're going to get a pencil. And we're going to trim. We're going to see if this will draw on here well enough to get a trim line. Does it? Yeah. Okay, so let's give it a trim and see if we can get it to fit. The nice thing about using this DIY shrink plastic is that it doesn't shrink up so much that you can't trim it with a pair of scissors like I'm doing afterwards. And I don't care if it's not a perfect circle, I just want it to fit inside here. So I'm going to trim it, trim it, trim it just a little bit, little bit, little bit until I can force it inside the pocket watch frame. I don't even need to put glue on that. She's going to stay. How cute is that? Can you all see that? You could just do that and call it a day. That's totally cute. You could, of course, glue it in. Um, you could cover it in crystal accents or something. Cute, cute, cute. Oh, I love that. All right. Oh, that's so cute. All right. <laughs> I'm just, that was way too easy. <laughs> All right, let's see what's in here before I do anything else. Let's see what kind of craziness we've got going on in this box. Let's 
So I like, that's just a little random piece of scrap piece of paper that I had in here. Um, I, you know, I don't even throw this kind of thing away because I can use it for something. When you're doing sort of a fabric collage, you never know what little bits are going to work for you for that next project. Now, that being said, I do only let this box get so full and then I either have to use up some of the bits or um, I have to clean it out and throw some stuff away. So be mindful of like how much room you actually have to work with. I'm going to take just a random piece of paper. I want to color this lace up a little bit. So I've got some Studio G ink. I'm sure this is not like waterproof or anything. It doesn't matter. And see, these are like $1.50 ink pads. So sometimes when I'm using them, the um, ink pad actually falls out of the... <laughs> That's all right. I don't care. And I got a green one, but I don't want to use the green one. I think I want to use blue. Because, you know, big surprise. Oh, see, that one's not going to stay either. I think I want to put like a piece of that back there. I have this little piece of tape measure, which I don't know why I want to use that on here. I just do. Somebody sent me that. I don't know who. I'm going to get out my tiny attacher, but I also think that I want to pull the sewing machine out really quick. I have one that's just for mixed media. I think I want to pull it out really quick and I think I want to do some stitching on here. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Hey guys. All right. So this is how our fabric tag looks. And again, we just have scraps of fabric. I cut this little piece off of the watch frame. I stitched all these things down. I'm going to take our little shrink plastic image and the rest of that little scrap of fabric which is at the top of the watch frame and I'm going to stitch it down just below this eyelet hole in the tag. And I'm, I'm not trimming off any of the threads. I'm leaving them hang. I'm leaving them hang, but I'm I'm trimming them so they're not like super long. But I'm not trimming them completely off. I want it to have bits and pieces sticking out. Of course, this one down here doesn't want to trim. Okay. So right now we have that, which is by itself interesting. You could stop there. We're not going to stop there. <laughs> Y'all should know better. We're not going to stop there. All right. So here is our piece of matte board. It's not quite dry. So let me get out the heat gun and let me try it and I'll be right back. Let me try it. Let me dry it and I'll be right back. Okay. I trimmed off a piece of the matte board with the arrows on it and I trimmed the black edges. I'm going to take this Tim Holtz um, distressing tool that I probably don't use nearly enough. And I'm going to just run it along the edges. The edges are a little too pristine for me.
then I'm going to attach this here, sort of offset it, and we're going to make this giant charm. So the prompt this month is um, charms and um, shrink it, um, basically making embellishments, and I really wanted to show you how to use um, a few different things from my Etsy shop to make some sort of charms or um, embellishments uh, for your journals, for your artwork. Um, you of course could just do this and you could, you know, this could be a necklace, it could be um, a keychain, um, and you could just use what you have, what you have laying around and make something interesting for your art or make some art interesting out of, uh, interesting art out of what you have. So what we want to do here is I want to poke a hole and I want to attach this to the board with a brad. So I'm going to use my pokey tool to mark where the hole should be. And then I've got my big giant hole punchy thing. So I'm going to stick this in here and line it up. There we go. And i got to get my drawer of brads. Yes, I have a drawer of brads. Because, you know, I couldn't find them, so I bought more. Plus, people gave me some, and so now I have drawer O brads. So it's been my goal to use up some of them. That one's not that color. I don't like that color. I want one of these dark ones, dark metal ones. Like distressed. Here we go. That'll work. Because it's like a similar color to the watch frame. So I want to use that one. That is super cute. I love that. Um, we'll put this away, I think, because it's just in the way. I want to get out a word. Uh, a word, ooh, or a phrase. Yeah, this is not, this is, I, yeah, this just popped out at me. It says, just a life. I don't know why I like that, but I do. So we're going to stick that on there. You could stick anything on there. Um, some of my stamp sets have words in them. So you could stamp a word on a piece of paper and use that. Oops. In fact, most of my stamp sets have words on them. Okay. Glue doesn't want to come out of the bottle. That can't be good. <laughs> now I am going to take the tag so it doesn't slide around too much and I'm going to take the bottom of it and I'm going to use my tiny attacher to staple it to the board so it won't slide around. And there you go. I love that. So use the bits and pieces that you have. Stuff from your stash. Pract play with some shrink plastic. I know we none of us have done shrink plastic in like a million years. Make some little charms, make some pendants, um, and s just use what you have. Try to think outside the box. I'm going to include the video links to the rest of the, my design team uh, in the description below. Let's see what they've come up with this month. Go ahead and watch their videos. Show them all some love. I sure would appreciate it if you all did that. And um, if you would like to support my channel by shopping in my Etsy shop and get a set of stamps or some stencils or something, the link for that, the link for my Facebook groups, my address if you want to send me happy mail, my email address, all of that stuff's in the description, so check it out. Of course, the most important thing is to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.